But that meeting last night was like all the rest. Three of our employees in the past month. There must be a way to stop this, Lieutenant. If we could catch the goons in the act, Mr. Rennick, or a victim could identify his assailant. The goons are only hired help. I'm talking about getting the loan sharks themselves. Until your man Bosky's able to talk, we're not even sure his beating's connected with the others. Of course it is. The poor fellow was trying to get out of town. Run away from them. Come in. Oh, Thompson. Lieutenant White from police headquarters. Thompson's Bosky's section boss. Thompson. Thompson, do you happen to know if Bosky was in debt to the loan sharks? I couldn't say, Mr. Rennick. I try and talk the boys out of borrowing. But I couldn't say about Bosky. Does he hang around that saloon across the street? Well, he's usually in for a beer after work. Ever see him gambling in the back room over there? Lieutenant, I don't like to make trouble for anybody. Okay, Thompson, that's all I wanted. Thanks. Hey, Charlie. Anything more about Bosky, Charlie? Just what the paper said. Internal injuries and a possible skull fracture. Boy, they sure gave him a going over. Oh, it's crazy to try and run. When they got you, it's smarter to pay. Big mistake Bosky made was opening his yap around here yesterday afternoon. What do you mean, Ed? I mean some rat in this section tipped off to Nellie that Bosky was leaving town. Sure, how else they find out? Well, they're not scaring me. I'm three weeks behind on my payments, but I told them to go whistle. I'll pay them when I can. You guys had my luck in the back room, you wouldn't be going in, Hawk. The way my luck's been running, I'm ready to throw that back room up for keeps. Well, meet me over there tonight, fella, and I'll show you how it's done. I haven't got time for even a beer tonight. My brother-in-law's coming in town, and I gotta get home. Oh, but I wanted to stay home and watch television. Television? I look at those four walls all day. One of these nights I wrap that television right around your ears. a grown girl. Three years, Joe. Three years since we've seen each other. Yeah, but you don't look like my kid sister anymore. Let me look at you. You're so pale, Joe. Well, they ran short of sun lamps up there. Oh, I nearly died thinking about you and that. You didn't belong there. Anybody can get in a fight. It was an accident. Yeah, sure. A two-year, nine-month accident. Now tell me about this Haynes guy. How's he been treating you? Oh, Ed's fine. Treating me fine. Good. Oh, Joe. Where in heaven did you get this horsehair sack? Lady, I want you to know I helped make this suit. You can help burn it. <laughs> you got a decent one? In my bag. Well, the first thing you're going to do is soak in a hot tub. And Still you... bossing me around, huh? No, I'm way out of practice. Well, let's get one thing straight, Marty. I'm only staying here until I can find a place of my own. Sure, sure. We'll talk about it later. Ed'll be home in a few minutes, but you take your... May I come in? Of course. Come on over and sit down a minute. Before I started supper, I thought I'd run in and tell you that... Oh, Joe, this is Ann Nelson, my brother Joe Gargan. Hi. Hello. Ann's our neighbor. She lives downstairs. Glad to meet you. I could see you making up your mind. Uh, did you talk to him, Ann? Yes, he said he'd like to see your brother in the morning. Who does? Uh, Joe, I, I told Ann about you. She works for Mr. Rennick, the general manager at Ed's tire plant, and, well, she asked him about a job for you. And you didn't get fired? He seemed to be quite interested in you. I've got to run along now. See you later. Thanks, Ann. Marty, I told you I didn't want anybody... I only told her so she could ask him about a job for you. Besides, she's like one of the family. Nice family. <laughs> Into the tub with you now. You can even use my bubble bath. That's something I really did miss. <laughs> well, what I still don't get through my head is... Which the one? Is the business of assault with a deadly weapon because you punch a guy. 
I once fought professionally. That makes my fist a weapon, as far as the law is concerned. Dessert's not very fancy tonight. Why don't you make them black? Black? All day long at the plant, I cook tires. I come home, and what does my wife serve me? Little tires. I made them for Joe. Mom used to do it when we were kids. <laughs> we'll be lucky if they don't taste like tires. Mmm. Synthetic rubber. A couple of comedians, you... <laughs> What's the matter, Netta? It's Steve! Martha? <coughs> what happened, Steve? The money man. It was my turn. Those dirty butchers. We gotta do something about this. I know what I'm doing. Netta and me are leaving town. I didn't figure you for a guy who'd run, Steve. This time they beat me. Next time it might be Netta. Well, this is Marty's brother, Joe Gargan, Steve Kasmer. Hello, Steve. Hi. What is this routine about money, men? Loan sharks. They got half the guys at the plant on the hook. Yeah, and you get behind your interest payments, and this is what happens to you. All you guys have got jobs. What do you go to those fellas for? Some of us get in the whole gambling. Some guys got bills to pay. A lot of reasons, Joe. Why don't you go to banks or legal loan companies? They want collateral, credit references. We're bum risk for legit outfits. We've been chumps, Steve. It's time we started hitting back. Yeah, like how? Like getting a bunch of guys together and going to the cops. We can prove we've been paying illegal interest, that guys have been beaten up. We can make some kind of charge stick. You can't get enough guys to do it. I'll get them, and you'll be our proof, you and Bosky. How about it, Steve? Well, you get the others, I'll string along. Now you're talking. We'll get Netta to put some ice packs in your face. You'll be okay. Working tires all day must have softened your brain, pal. What do you mean? Well, you can't beat the kind of guys who run the loan shark rackets. The idea is to pay off and stay away from them. We've paid them plenty. They've been getting away with everything but murder. And that's what'll happen to you next if you go ahead with that crazy idea of yours. Ed, my sister's too young to be a widow. Look, Joe, you're a nice guy. But don't try and run my life, and I won't try and run yours. Okay. That's the way you want it. I'm used to talking to a lot of mugs like myself. It's been a long time since I met a, a girl in your class. You know, Mom. You're letting that prison term give you an inferiority complex. Marty tell you why I was in prison? She told me you got in a fight, you knocked a man down, his head hit something, he almost died. Well, now you know the kind of guy I am. Yep. Quick-tempered. And I'm not a bit scared. It's getting late. I think I better go in. This Mr. Rennick I'm going to see tomorrow. You know him well? I'm his secretary. I'll see you there in the morning.
Oh, I'm so glad you're home. Good morning. Hiya. Joe Gargan here to see you, Mr. Rennick. Yes, sir. He'll be free in a minute. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry about last night. Forget it. I have. I just want you to know I don't go around making passes at married women. Don't you? And I just want you to know that I'm not a married woman. Not married? Then who was that guy that... My brother, Paul. He lives with me. Paul works here at the plant. He's really a very nice guy. And keep your eyes and ears open, Charlie. Okay, Mr. Rennie. Come in, please. No call for a few minutes, Anne. Yeah. Glad to meet you. Likewise. Now, this is Mr. Howell, the union representative. Joe Gargan. How are you, Gargan? How are you, Mr. Howell? Sit down, Gargan. Anne has told me all about you. Oh. Where you came from, the work you've done, it fits what I've got in mind. I don't follow you. You came from a tough neighborhood. Then you knocked around the country at different jobs. Truck driver, boss of a railway section gang, bouncer at a bar, manager of a gambling club at Las Vegas. There's nothing much you don't know, except about my last job for the state. I know about that, too. And it might even be a help. I don't get you. This tire plant's a vital industry, Gargan, and we have a big problem. We've got to hold our workers, and we've got to keep employee morale up. Yes, I guess you're right. We're having real trouble right now. A lot of our men are involved with loan sharks. But what has that got to do with being a job, Mr. Rennick? There may be some of our employees working for these money vultures, Gargan. I want to know who they are. Mr. Howell and the union officials do, too. You bet we do. Our people are suffering because a few rats may be among them. If there are, we want to know it. Maybe you could discover who's behind this loan shark outfit. If we could learn that, we'd find a way to break them. I'm sorry, that's out of my line. I just wanted an ordinary job. So long, gentlemen. Well, that didn't take long. Too long. Joe, wait. What happened? Nothing, but thanks for the try, kid. That's right. If any of you know guys on other shifts who are paying off, talk to them. Tell them we're getting together and going to the cops. There's a guy over in compound that's been paying off for years. Get him over here, next time out period. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? I talked to 10 guys so far today, Charlie. Guys in Hock to Donnelly. Yeah. Six of them said you were the bird who first told them where they could borrow dough or got him in that back room to gamble. So? What are you doing, Charlie? Getting a cut for steering guys in? Now, see here, fella. Don't be throwing knives at me. What's eating you anyway? Just this. We're finding out from all the guys who first steered him. If your name comes up many more times, Rennick's going to get an earful.
have you been? Ann phoned over an hour ago. What happened with Mr. Rennie? It's no dice, Marty. He had a special job in mind. And I'm just an ordinary guy who wants to live a quiet life. I don't understand. Didn't this you? is going to be a bad luck town for me, kid. I better shove off while I'm still even. Don't talk so silly, Joe. Well, there are plenty of other jobs around. We just thought it'd be nice if you worked with Ed and the rest. Yeah, it'd have been real cozy. Hello? Yes. What's the matter? Ed! Oh, Joe, Ed! Well, that's just about it. The police are making a quiet investigation in the plant. But we're not disclosing that we suspect it was murder. I'll handle it my way. Alone. I regret the circumstances that brought it about. But I'm glad you've changed your mind. My only pitch is to dig up the guy who killed Ed. It might be necessary to dig deep into the Lone Shark outfit to accomplish that. I can dig pretty good. You let me know when you find out anything. Sure. I'll keep in touch with you. My home phone is Republic 21336. Can you remember that? Republic 21336. I got it. What you're doing is not just important to you and me, Joe. It's important to a lot of people, a lot of wives and kids. What I'm doing is strictly between us. Nobody else hears, you understand? Nobody. Certainly. Where do I start in the plant? Handling crude rubber. When you're ready to move to another department, give me the word. Good luck. We must have had more to talk about this time. Any objections in having dinner some night with a fellow from the crude rubber section? You name the night. My first payday. It's a date. Oh, Joe. I'm glad you're with us. Thanks. What's the matter, Joe? Haven't you learned to love our sweet odor yet? I smell better stables. A couple of more days and you'll think you're smelling violets. <laughs> you told me that two days ago. So how did I know you were so sensitive? just walking out in the fresh air. You told me about it. How it made me sick and all the things that happened. Nice round tires on your car started out in a gooey mess like this, would you, Joe? If you don't shut up, Tubby, I'll make a... No! Now I can grab a smoke. You mean you ain't gonna eat any lunch? Funny thing. I lost my appetite. Hey, Thompson. Thompson was that section boss. This is Ed Haynes' brother-in-law, Joe Gargan. Glad to know you, Gargan. We were sure sorry about Ed. Yeah, tough break. Tough break? Is that all you got to say about a murder? That's a big beef, Steve, especially when you haven't got proof. That's what I was telling the boys. You don't seem very bothered about Ed's death. Look, in the first place, we don't know for sure it wasn't an accident. Oh, crud. Second place, I told Ed not to do anything crazy. What do you mean? It was Ed's fault? If you guys are sucker enough to get on the hook, then you gotta go through with it. Gargan, you got ice water for blood and a hunk of rock for a heart. Well, I'm off the shark's hook, thanks to the little ponies. 
Maybe you can still bet on a horse around here? Sure, right across the street. Hey, I gotta get over there. There's an ag runner today I won on three times. I'd sure like to take a flyer. If I had the scratch, I could sure use a little cash. You really busted, huh? Flatter than Tubby's head. Well, seeing as how you're broke, I'll buy you a beer later, fellow, okay? You got a customer. Still in the deep freeze with you boys? Ah, no, sit down. You're just trying to act tougher than you really are. Hi, lover. What'll it be? This uh, hank of hair and bag of bones is named Ivy, Joe. Anything you want, just ask him. Anything? Hmm, trouble. Beer all around. You better make it five. Thompson's coming. Pretty cute. Hmm. It looks like Charlie hit it again. 85 bucks. When I retire from the plant, I'm just going to sit around here and let the horses support me. Too bad you weren't in on it, Joe. Yeah, I could really use a steak like that. Well, this is the way to get it. Here you are, lover. I dip my finger in it just to make it sweeter. Those kind of eyes call for a slap in the face, Bob. You got a real nice pair of eyes yourself, honey. They're kind of pointed, but not hairy. You must be the first wolf who ever shaved his ears. I wouldn't like to see you make a habit out of it, Joe. But maybe you could pick up some money in the crap game in the back. I'll get you a steak if you want to. No, thanks. I never win when I really need it. Well, maybe you better stay out of there anyway. A guy as broke as you is a cinch to get bitten by the loan sharks. Now, there's a quick cash angle I forgot about. And if you've got all your marbles, you'll keep on forgetting. Yeah, but you fellas don't work it right. If you pay the loan sharks back right away, you never have any trouble with them. I'd like to meet that money, man. Come on. Eight, eight, eight roses, nine five bucks interest. Look, Mr. Donnelly, I'm not getting any of the loan paid back. Can't you take half of that five on the loan money? No, and you're two weeks behind on your interest payment. Make it up. You can't get blood from a stone. Don't make us try. My friend here needs a little cash, Mr. Donnelly. You work at the plant? Yeah, I work at the plant. Okay, we might arrange a loan. Well, I gotta run, fella. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. How much you want? Well, 50 will do. Five dollars a week interest till you've paid up. If it takes me 10 weeks to pay off, I'm being clipped 50 bucks interest on a $50 loan. And if it takes a year, you're paying 260 bucks interest. Do you want it? 260? It's 500%. Well, that's kind of high, isn't it? Go try a bank. Oh, don't get excited. I'll take it. A little information. Name? Joe Gargan, 914 Bronson Avenue. Make your payments every Friday. I'll try hard. I wouldn't miss if I were you. I won't miss. Welcome to the club, sucker. You're off to a good start, Joe. There's nothing started that I can't handle, including a little date tonight on Mr. Donnelly's money. Where's the phone booth around here? Thanks. A wonderful dinner, Joe. Only I wish you'd waited until payday. I tried. The strain was too much. <laughs> Paul told me where you got the money. Paul talks too much. Just that he was a little worried. He, he knows I like you. Then how about me putting my arms around you? On the dance floor.
I did. Love it. It's kind of dangerous. What is it? Being this close. The perfume again. I think you've cooled off now, though. Just the top burner. The oven's still warm. Show me the ocean or something. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. It's my car. I might make you walk home. <laughs> Not me. I give in too easy. even tomorrow. I got a horse that can't lose. Why don't you smarten up, Joe? If you're as serious about that as you claim you're... Why don't you lay off, Paul? Stop playing Mother Rabbit. Don't just stay away from that guy. Don't be silly, Paul. He's a wrong guy for you, Ann. He's still in debt to the sharks. He gambles his pay Please. away. Where did you get a driver's license? Steal it? I want a word with you. Talk fast. I'm in a hurry. You're five weeks behind on your payments. Get it up. Say, you talk real tough. This is a polite notice, Gordon. It's the last one you'll get. Thanks. Sue me. Gargan! You're not acting like a very bright boy, Gargan. I like to keep even with the guy I'm talking to. Hiya, beautiful. Hi. Oh. I begin to think your brother doesn't like me. But I do. <laughs> You're the type that pick up a stray dog and mother him. <laughs> the names he calls himself. Who was that man you were talking to? That was no man, that was a leech. <laughs> Wiggle your hips over, chicken. We gotta go. All right. Besides, I'm a guy not much for swimming. Oh, it's a shame, because you look so cute in a bathing suit. I got news. You do a thing or two yourself. I don't get fresh, fella. You know, you're a handy guy to have on a picnic. If you could cook, I might marry you. Wait till your ass, lady. You don't have to. It's leap year. Say, that's right. I better watch my step. 
He ain't been just toying with my affections these past months, have you, mister? When a guy will go swimming in weather like this, he's got to be in love. Ah, my guy's a sissy. Isn't even cold tonight. And how come I turn into an icicle when I come out of that water? Must have thought out. Feels warm now. Getting warmer all the time. Coffee on while you're putting the car away. Gargan? Yeah, I got something for you. Nelly send you? I don't know, Donnelly. Give him a message for me. Tell him Mr. Gargan said to come himself the next time. Door. How could you do that? You ought to see the garage. Joe, now, now they're after you. Now, how about my coffee? Paul was right. He said you were headed for trouble. Well, there's no trouble, baby. Just, just a little misunderstanding. Oh, Joe, I'm so scared. Now, who's the sissy? Why? I'd just like to have a little talk with you, Mr. Gargan. We're talking. I don't do business in the street. I'll buy you a drink and dinner. You name the place. You know the Starlight Club? Fine. Get in. I'll go by taxi. A careful man. Give him some cab fare. See you at the Starlight. Disappoint me and turn out to be honest. I just wanted the ride. I wasn't after any profit. Sit down. Say when. Let's not get clubby. What's on your mind? You gave our boy a pretty fair going over. Never sent a boy to do a man's job. Why should I handle it myself? I'm trembling at the thought. What's a fellow like you doing in a factory, Gargan? I'm writing a novel about making tires. You're writing a novel about prisons when you did that stretch in the can? How much do you make a week in that tire oven? Until they raise taxes again, I take home 58 bucks. Chicken feed. We could use a man like you, Gargan. Make yourself some real money. You can't spend it behind bars. People working for us don't go behind bars. I could start you at a hundred and a half a week. Buy your car some new clothes. I can't get rich on a hundred and a half. Make it two hundred. That's clear. Paid in cash. No income tax. What would I do? 
collections. You work along with Lou for a while till you know how we operate. I know how you operate. I owe you 50 bucks, plus 25 interest. Remember? Forget it. The way you tossed all around, you must boss the outfit. You just do as I say and everything will be fine. You want a job? Don't rush me. I'll think it over. Don't take too long. The insight tell you we're leading with our shins. You heard what Thompson said about him. It don't add up that Gargan don't care what happened to his brother-in-law. He's one of those hard apples who likes money better than he does relatives. Besides, Thompson said the guy is convinced that it was an accident. Could be an act. If it is, we want him where we can keep check, don't we? If it isn't, we got ourselves a good man. Well, if he's coming in with us, I'm going to stick to him closer than his underwear. Find something in the plant? I'm pretty sure I know who our boy is, but I can't prove it. I got an offer to join the Sharks. What do you think? I'm going to do it. I can't do any more in the plant. I'm sure I can pick our man through the outfit. You find out who's running this thing, and every plant in town will be indebted to you, Joe. I'll find out, but don't tip my play. Not even to Ann. No, of course not. You should be protected, though. What about letting the police... No. I said I'd handle this alone. Whatever you say, Joe. Seven, lover. You interested? Someday, Ivy, I'm liable to take you up on one of your invitations. Then what would you do? Sweetie, with you, I'd forget everything my mother taught me. What about me, Ivy? With you, I just forget. Come on, you guys. I got something I want to show you. You're still 20 behind, Buckley. Let's have it. I haven't got it. On payday? I'll cash your check. I cashed it. Over in the crap game. The ten's what's left. Want to know why he didn't show up at the plant today? Take a look. He's learning how to be a loan shark. Okay, Casma, you made your payment. Beat it. I said beat it. Better get up that 20 next week, Buckley, and we won't play anymore. Go on, shove off. What's the take here, Denoe? Uh, about a grand a week. Mm, I figured it was better than that. Yeah, we're operating in 20 other plants around town. Sounds better. Who gets the biggest slice? What do you care, Gargan? I just wanted to know who you turned the dough into. You'll find out later. I set up your collection center in this crummy neighborhood. The neighbors mind their own business. Well, well, if it isn't my old sparring partner. Figures down, I guess that's something. Fix yourself a drink. Thanks. When do I stop playing pencil pusher? In a few weeks, I'll put you in a spot of your own. Why the hideout? 
I thought you people couldn't be touched. If the federal tax boys got to look at the money coming in here, it could be embarrassing. Ah, figures from the aircraft plants. Okay. Hey, Walter. It's uh, Joe Gargan, Walter Carr, our bookkeeper. Hiya. Gargan just joined up with us today. I'm glad to meet you. Walter's one fellow you have to worry about all the time, Gargan. That's so. He's dangerous? His books are, if your figures don't add up with his every night. Good. Uh-huh. What kind of profit you doing here total? Or is that none of my business? Well, I can tell you it runs into thousands a week. Not bad for just factories. We got other tie-ins. Bookies who send us the suckers who can't pay their tabs. Certain used car dealers who steer us to guys behind in their payments. I got an angle for you that'd kick your takeaway up. I'm surprised that you boys never thought of it. A guy with ideas already. What's the angle? Wait till Big Ear shoves off. Donnelly! You know better than to pull a rod in here. Stop tangling with Donnelly. He's dangerous, and we don't like feuds in the outfit. Then keep him out of my hair. Just stop needling him. Let's hear this angle of yours. Housewives. And you're what about them? They always need dough. They play cards, they lose. Bet a horse, they lose. They're afraid to tell their husbands. How do we get to them? Their laundry service. Laundry? I don't follow. Start a laundry, or buy one. We put our own men out for deliveries. It's a big deal. But it's got possibilities. We'd have a legit business tied in with our operation. It's good. And I'll run it. Agreed? Well, not so fast, I don't even know if we'll go for it. You gotta talk it over with somebody first? What gives you that idea? Well, it's been a long day. Good night. Expecting someone else? Turn off the chill, baby. What's the matter? I found out why you quit your job. News travels fast. Especially bad news. 200 a week isn't bad. Oh, Joe, how could you? Money's a handy thing, baby. Their dough is good and they got plenty of it. It's not good for me, Joe. What do you mean by that? I love you. If you love me, you'll give up this whole crazy, dirty thing. I can't, Anne. If that's final, Martha wants no part of it either. She's giving up her apartment and moving in with me. Brother Joe is never to darken your door again. Is that the story? That's the way you've written it. Okay, Anne. Goodbye. There she is, Joe, the first of the new trucks. We'll have 12 more inside a month. Yeah, we're in business. And we'll clean up. <laughs> clean up, laundry business, good gag, huh? Side splitting. Now, let's get down to the ugly details. Where do I stand? You're running the place. Getting 300 a week salary, what more do you want? I don't give ideas like this for three bills a week. Look, Joe, it cost us a bundle to buy this plant. Take it easy a while, huh? Okay, Vince, for a while. Hi, Mrs. Hilton. Hello. Your bill's three weeks old, Mrs. Hilton. Can I collect today? Gosh, I'm kind of sure right now. Can't you let it go another week? 
Well, if you need dough, why don't you make a little loan from the company? From the company? Sure, they'll give you cash and add it to your weekly bill. You pay off painlessly. Well, fine. Could I get 25? No sooner said than done. There you are. This is wonderful. Now, you pay two bucks a week interest till you're paid off. It'll appear on your bill as a charge for special service. Two dollars. So long, Mrs. Hilton. held up on some collections. Trouble? Two no pays. One day was a little souse, but kind of tough. <laughs> okay, Norm. Tell Rock to get on it. Right. If you miss another payment next week, we'll have to get in touch with your husband and collect from him. Goodbye, Mrs. Sloan. There's two more for you. That Higgins name is three weeks behind. Here's Norm Stockwaller. He was the last man in. Oh, I'm all finished up for now. I'll carry him over on next week's. There's your laundry ledger. Hmm, not bad. Where's the loan book? I told you, Mr. Gargan, you'll have to get Mr. Phillips to okay it. He says nobody sees the loan book but him. Okay, Waller. I was just trying to weigh you down. I'll see you next week. Try and get Mr. Phillips on the phone for me. Right. Mr. Phillips on the phone. Vince? You better take a run over here right away, pal. I got something very important to talk about. Uh, phones have ears, you know. This needs the personal touch. Okay. Yes? If Donnelly shows up while Phillips is in my office, keep him out. I got you. Got here fast, Vince. I didn't like your sound on the phone. What's on your mind? I got a beef. This setup's making big money, but I'm not. According to my figures. Figures? Who told you to keep figures? I send Carr down every week to handle bookkeeping. Yeah, you also told him not to show me the loan books. So I've been doing a little figuring myself. I don't like this, Joe. And I don't like my deal. I got a new one in mind. I want 25% of the laundry loan business. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, I'm being easy on you. You got a profitable laundry and a whole new loan set up. Thanks to me. I might get you five. Not interested. Maybe I better talk to the boss myself, Vince. It's about time, don't you think? What makes you keep on thinking there's another boss, Gargan? You do, Vince. Just like now, for instance. You said you'd get me five, not give me. You got a big opinion of your own brains, Joe. You better watch out they don't run away with you. I'll let you know.
be back in a couple of hours, Rock. Okay, Mr. Gurdon. How's everything been going? All right. Do you need anything, Marty? No. Joe, I, I think you'd better go. Well, if you ever do, you can always reach me at the embassy laundry. Hello, Ann. What do you want here? I'm just visiting my sister. It's an old family custom. You don't have a family. Beat it. Martha doesn't want to see you, neither do we. So why don't you just leave us alone? Give this to Molly. Hey, Gargan. Don't dirty up the apartment and take off. Another two minutes and we'll have to fumigate the place. This morning, Joe. I had a bad night. And so far, it's been a bad day with this creep bird dog in me. Well, I gotta run. Just drop by to tell you you're in for 10. Okay, Vince. 10%. What is this? Gargan getting a percentage? This was his idea. And who are you to question anything, Lou? I give you ideas, and I'm still working on a salary. You come up with nothing but stupid ideas and then carry them out yourself. Like telling Thompson to knock a guy off right and... You're getting too big for your pants, Lou. Go on, get out before I really blow up. You accepted the 10% pretty easy, Joe. I'll ride along for a while, Vince. Something new bothering you this morning? No. I just had a bad night. Glad to have you for a partner, Joe. Be seeing you.
How are you, Joe? Not so good. What's wrong? I'm getting out, Mr. Rennick. I got what I wanted, the guy who killed Ed. Who was it? Thompson. You're positive, Joe? <laughs> He'll spill his guts as soon as he sees a pair of handcuffs. What about the head fella, the man running the whole thing? I didn't get to him. But you can grab Phillips and Donnelly and knock over their whole setup. That's enough. I know how you feel, Joe, but you've gone this far. I've gone too far. Now I want to square this rep I got as a two-legged polecat. If we don't get the boss of this loan shark group, he'll just start up again. But it's not working out. Figure this laundry idea would get me to the top man fast. I don't like clipping housewives. We'll fix that later. I don't like what I'm doing to Ann and Marty. If you could just hang on a couple of more weeks, Joe, that may be all the time you need. Okay, Mr. Rennie. I'll do the best I can. That's the stuff, Joe. Answer the door, Nancy. Hey, you deaf? I said answer the door. Hi. What do you want this early in the morning, Lou? Early? It's one o'clock. A little news for you. Oh, Vince! Go practice in the bedroom. How can I practice in the bedroom with no music? You don't need music. Beat it. Well, what's on your mind, Lou? Your boy Goggin. He's got rat in him, like I said. Are you just saying it again, or have you really got something? He followed you from the laundry the other day. You lost him in the parking lot. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, I've been trying to get some more on him, but he hasn't been out of line since. This could be just Joe's overgrown curiosity. I got a way to find out. How? Last night, Thompson told me we got another troublemaker at the Delta plant. Paul Nelson. Gargan's girl's brother. So? So we send Gargan over to teach him a lesson. I'll go dress. You call the garage for my car. You two look like you're doubling for Sherlock Holmes. What's up? I understand you got a little bloodhound in you, Joe. You can talk plainer than that. You tailed me from here a few days ago. Yeah. I like to know everything that's going on. I like to know how things stand, too. So I got a little job for you. Your girlfriend's brother's making trouble for us at Delta. What kind of trouble? Trying to get the boys to holler copper? Talking guys out of gambling? He won't get any place. He might, Joe. So he's got to learn to mind his own business. I want you to take care of it. Okay. I'll talk to him. Good. Lou will go along with you. I like to hear how you handle it. And we don't mean talk. He's got to learn a real lesson. Tonight, eh, Joe? So I can stop worrying about you. gone. They must be out for the evening. I'll get them tomorrow. We'll hang around. I'm not going to sit here all night and bend my spine. Let's shove off. I'll catch him in the morning. It's only been ten minutes. What's the matter? You nervous? I 
That's him. Let's go. for a minute. Come along with me like nice little girls. Come you too. Go on, beat it. Get out of my way. Oh! You dirty yellow rat! Not bad. It'll do for a starter. Let's go. Is he all right, Ann? Yes. But he wants to kill Joe. Oh, I'm so ashamed. He's gone too far this time, Marty. I'm gonna call the police. If they revoke his parole, he'd be sent back to prison. I'm afraid that's where he belongs. And I wanted to marry him. I get... I can't believe it's the same man. Joe couldn't have changed, so... There must be a reason for all this. What possible reason could he have to justify what he's doing? I don't know. Maybe we better let the police find out his reasons. And wait. Don't call them yet. Wait till I come back. Please. Where are you going? You handle that better than I expected. you know if he needs another lesson. Don't bother. You got gorillas that'll handle the muscle. Martha, what are you doing here? I want to talk to you, Joe. Go on home. Can't you see that I'm busy? Joe, I've got to talk to you. Go ahead, Joe. Talk to your sister. I'm shoving off. See you, Joe. How is Paul? Well, he's alive. No thanks to you. I'm sorry about that. But it's something that had to be done. Had to be done? Joe, what's it all about? What's happened to you? Nothing has happened to me. I'm just doing a job, and I don't want to talk about it. Oh, Joe, it doesn't make sense. You joining up with the people who killed Ed. Martha, will you stop worrying about me? What I'm doing makes sense. Oh, they did a fine job on you in that prison. They've turned you into a thief, a dirty, rotten beast. Martha, will you let me handle my own affairs? Now you go on home. Go on, beat it. Andrew's right. You belong in prison. You're going back. We'll go to the police tonight and see to that. Marty. thing up tonight. I'm going to take a stab at pressuring Phillips to take him to the head man. You better have Thompson picked up right away. Stay close to the phone. I'll give you a blast if I can make it. Right. Bye. You've been real sharp, people, but you never conned me for a minute. Yeah. You got less sawdust in your head than I figured. Come on, I'm going to take you down and show you how the boilers work in the laundry. You never really inspected them. You better check with Phyllis before you carry out any more of your stupid ideas, Danelli. 
Uh, I've been thinking about this boiler gag for a long time. You're going to be the cleanest stiff in town. something? Huh? Hear what? Look, if that box had a bed in it, you'd sleep there. Get your ear out and answer the door. Hiya, Nancy. It's Vince. Hi. Kinda late to come calling, isn't it, Joe? Not when you got trouble. Play with your fur coats. What kind of trouble? That big idea of yours backfired. The police are getting the news about me slugging Paul Nelson tonight. So what? So I'm slapped with another prison rat. You better leave town for a while. I am leaving town. For good. But I need a chunk of cash. Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand? For my ten percent partnership. You don't have ten percent anymore. Take off, Gog, and have a nice trip. Remember those figures I was keeping, Vince? I got them down in a little book all of my own. What does that mean? It means that the income tax people will get a big ear full of that undeclared cash you boys have been pocketing. Why, you cheap low down. Relax, Vince. You didn't think I'd be sucker enough to take a rap alone, did you? Look, Joe, we're both excited. We can figure a way out of this. I have. Fifty thousand. I haven't got that much cash lying around. Then let's talk to the boss man. He must have it sticking out of his ears. It's kind of late. But I'll do what I can. You go home and wait. Ah, oh, no. I'll stick with you, Vince. To help sell him on the idea. Don't mention you're bringing a friend.
Don't tell me he lives here. In an apartment upstairs. I don't get it. He's crazy about the theater. So he bought one. What's the idea of this? The idea is he's got a rope around our necks. What do you think you're up to, Gargan? So you're the boss man of the outfit. Tell me, why were you shoving a pencil around? What's it to you? He wants $50,000, Walter. He's got to leave town. Well, why should we give him $50,000? He kept his own books on the laundry loans. He'll tip the whole setup if we don't pay him off. This is the man you were so sure of, Phillips. Don't get excited, Carr. Just get up the 50 G's. He's got it coming to him anyway, Walter. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe he does deserve a better break. And whatever he deserves, he should get. And he will. Get after him with that. Good job, Gargan. You made a pretty fair cop. Somehow the idea never entered my mind, Lieutenant. Oh. Here's a present for you. Joe, all I'll say now is thanks. There's a very capable secretary waiting in my... Let's get out of here. Some wise guys will have to start selling tickets to this performance. Thank you.